Let's talk about your career for a second. You are looking for that big fight at 147 pounds. You know the facts. Across the street, they're doing sort of a mini tournament There's over no there. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as across the street. You know, um, back in the days, you never heard a fighter say across the street. What street? This is boxing. Everybody fight everybody. Mo Maurice is with the zone, with Rock Nation. Uh, Ramirez is with Top Ray. What what street is we talking about? Well, this there this is certainly reason for optimism. But I think you would guess that they're probably going to do some kind of Spence fight after, maybe with Manny Pacquiao, maybe with somebody else before they get to you in 2020. That's that's their decision. You know, they got the rights to do whatever they want. But you know, uh, there's no street line. There's no nothing. You know, it's boxing. The best supposed to fight the best. Now, what Terrence Crawford is speaking of is something that we all know to be true. We all know what Terrence Crawford is saying is 100% correct. And that's how boxing is supposed to go. And that's how boxing went before these new age boxers have came onto the scene. Before we got Floyd Mayweather caramelized and before Al Heyman started putting his foot in his neck on boxing. Okay. The best is supposed to fight the best. End of story. Can you imagine um, Leonard, Leonard and Hagler, uh, Leonard and Duran, um, Hearn and Duran, and just all those great fights that we've seen. With the Al Heyman blueprint, do you guys realize if he was implementing the Al Heyman plan back then, do you realize you would have got none of those epic fights that we hold as the golden era and that we cherish to this very day? Do you guys know that? Are you aware? Those fights with those fighters would never would have been made because that was the best fighting the best to try to figure out who the best was when being the best actually mattered. OK, it does not matter to these guys, as Leonard Ellaby told you in the video I just did on the Duck Chronicles episode 15. He told you there's a difference between being the best fighter and the biggest star. OK, and shouts out to who, who, whoever was interviewing Leonard Ellaby because you grilled him to the maximum. OK, and he said, well, OK, so what you're telling me, Leonard. It's all about the money. You don't care about the best fighting the best. Just give me the money. And Leonard Ellaby looked at him, shucked his soldier and said, hey, it is what it is. Hey, everybody can have their opinion. So there it is. He said, Leonard Ellaby said, my goals are Floyd Mayweather's goals, right? And Floyd Mayweather has told you, don't blame Javante Tank Davis for the competition he's fighting. Blame me. Okay. So if Leonard Ellaby's goals is what Floyd is, and the interviewer asked him, so you, you don't, you're not concerned with fighting the best. You're just concerned about the money. And Leonard Ellaby says in a nutshell, yes, that lets you know the entire criteria over there at PBC. Okay. I don't need to explain that this is bad for boxing. You can tell that it's bad for boxing. Listen, with all bull crap aside, what these fighters make and what you are getting paid, it's none of our business. And as a boxing fan, I do not care. I don't care about, I don't care to know about all this politics and little stuff that goes on between. I've learned more about promoters in this last couple of years of observing boxing than I ever had. Okay. It's, it's now that promoters are main characters and are commanding more attention and, and, and more view time than the damn fighters. I don't care about promoters. I don't care what you're getting paid. The only thing I care about is the only thing I should care about given my position. The only thing I care about is seeing the fights that I want to see. That's all I care about. I don't care about 100 million this, 8 million this. I do not care. Keep your business inside business offices, rooms, and all those, you know what I'm saying, private rooms where you guys can discuss amongst your crew. We don't need to know and we don't care. You know what I'm saying? Some do, but I'm not here to pocket watch no damn boxer. I'm here to watch a boxer to either get dropped or drop somebody. 
That's why I'm here. But I care nothing about this. Okay? So the Al Heyman plan being implemented across the board. Okay? Boxing could not sustain Al Heyman if he got into this game any earlier than what he is right now. Okay? If boxing is on a last dying leg. Okay? Al Heyman is that figure in the night that walks into the hospital. Okay? With a hat and a trench coat. Okay? That person that walks up beside your bed and suffocates you in the sleep while the nurses are talking on their phone looking at TV gods. That's what Al Heyman is. He's a thief in the night ready to steal the life out of boxing. And I hate to put this all on him because he's not solely responsible for everything that is wrong with boxing. But this is what I do have to say about Al Heyman. Now, help me paint this picture, okay? Leo Santa Cruz versus Gary Russell Jr. You didn't get to see that fight? Al Heyman. Gary Russell Jr. versus Javante Davis. You didn't get to see that fight? Al Heyman. Deontay Wilder versus Dylan White. You're not going to get to see that fight because Al Heyman don't want it to happen. Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. You're not going to see that fight because uh, Al Heyman doesn't want it to happen. Okay? Terrence Crawford Versus Errol Spence, you're not going to see that fight because they don't want it to happen, okay? And I could keep going on with fights that you were supposed to see, but you didn't get able to see strictly because of Al Heyman. Let's just stick with those little fights right there. All those are big money pay-per-view fights that I just named, okay? Every last one of them. Gary Russell Jr. is on PBC and can't get a fight with a PBC fighter. Okay, he's been trying to fight Leo Santa Cruz forever. Okay, Tank Davis should have been fighting the Abner Mares of the division and, and, and everything. He hasn't been doing it. Okay, listen to all those, and those is just to name a few that he's responsible for you not seeing. Those are good nights of boxing that you guys have missed out on. There ain't no taking it back, there ain't no denying it. Okay. Those are good nights of boxing that you will never get back. And how do I tell when you know when somebody is clearly ducking? This is no hate against Errol Spence. This is no launch against Al Heyman. This is a boxing fan observing for things for what they are. Errol Spence was humble in the beginning. He's acting like a straight up diva now and nobody likes it. Okay, same thing with Andy Ruiz. Humble in the beginning, he's acting like a diva now, and nobody likes it. Okay, Deontay Wilder, acting like a diva now, and nobody likes it. Javante Davis, acting like a diva, and nobody likes it. And what do all these fighters have in common? They're PBC fighters. Okay, you guys have a reputation of not wanting to fight the best. Okay. You do not want to fight the best at all. Not even a little bit. Okay, not even a little bit. You guys are fighting once a year. And then the people that you do fight, half the time is people that y'all dragging out of a weight class to pull them up to your weight class. You know what I'm saying? Or you're weight draining somebody. Or you're, or, or you're trying to get somebody coming off the couch. Or, or you're trying to get somebody sick or injured or whatever it is. You know, it's always something. All you PBC fighters love to claim you the man, but don't want to prove it. Javante, Wilder, Spence, all you guys, you don't want to prove it. Charlos, you don't want to prove it. Now, like I've always said, if you want to tell when somebody's ducking, this is the duck test. The only thing you have to pay attention to is goalpost moving. Okay, that's it. Pay attention to goal post moving, okay? That's why people say keep that same energy. You know what I'm saying? Keep that same energy mean the same thing that you was talking two days before, a week from now, okay? You, sh you should be able to talk all the way up into the present day, okay? If you do not, then you switched up and you ain't keep that same energy. Errol Spence told Terrence Crawford to his face, that he needed a belt to fight him, right? 
right? We all got, I mean, I got it on tape, right? Okay, Terrence Crawford gets a belt. He comes back to Errol Spence and say, let's make a fight. What does Earl Spence say? Well, Sean Porter got a belt too. Oh, so first it was get a belt. Now that I got a belt, Sean Porter got a belt, and you want to go the easy route, you say. Okay? Now, peep that. So it went from get a belt, he gets a belt, and then he says Sean Porter got a belt too. Then after that, he went from that to basically saying, I want to unify first. Then I want to fight you. All right. Then it went to, I want to unify first. Then I want to fight you. Then it went from that to what? He's across the street. So let me get this straight. You said he needed a belt. He got a belt. Then you say Sean Porter got a belt. All right. Then when it comes to fighting him, you say you want to fight him after you unify. Okay. Then after you say, after you unify, then you turn around and say that, Terrence Crawford is on the wrong side of the street. Now peep this, because this is the new goalpost that's been moved. Now, all of a sudden, these guys don't respect um, Terrence Crawford belt anymore. Now, all of a sudden, his belt is no good, and they're boycotting that sanctioning body. Look at all those roadblock barriers that PBC and, and, uh, and Earl Spence put up not to fight Terrence Crawford. Let me tell you, if you don't want to fight nobody, you can come up with every excuse in the world to fight somebody. But if it's really about the best fighting the best, how does he get all this stuff? Get a belt. I got a belt. I still don't want to fight you. Okay. I want to fight you after I unify. Okay. Then he talks about right after he unify, he still don't want to fight him because he crossed the street. And then now, now you're saying if he does happen to cross the street, now he got the wrong fucking belt. So there's nothing that he can do that will get him this fight unless Terrence and not, not unless Terrence, unless Earl Spence and Al Heyman actually want the fight. Look how many times they move the goalposts. Okay. Earl Spence is full of shit. Okay. I did like him at first too, but I like the humble Earl Spence. This Earl Spence that's feeling himself, that's acting like he's walking around with uh, stilettos. Okay, and red lipstick, you know what I'm saying? Wearing that sweet perfume, and we know what it's called. You know, that guy, I'm not a fan of that guy. Mo I I'm not gonna lie, mostly, I mostly liked Earl Spence because I liked that he was a good fighter, and he knew he was a good fighter, and he was humble about it. He downplayed it. He didn't want to talk about him black and Floyd's eye, something like that. That's what I liked about him, you know what I'm saying? But now, this new inflated ego of Errol Spence. And if you've been paying attention to Errol Spence, I've been telling y'all he's been on the verge of going full Charlo. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all. And as soon as I seen him with that haircut, I was like, this dude went full Charlo. He full Charlo now. You know what I'm saying? And he's on his way to declining. Okay? It first started with the drinking. I don't know if he's doing no coke. Errol Spence sure do look toe up all the time. That, that's all I got to say. And then another thing on top of that, Errol Spence is fat. Okay? He's fat. I know what Errol Spence look like around training time. You know what I'm saying? When it's time to get, get ready for the fight. This guy is fat. Not only that, Errol is in the wrong damn weight class. He's a big boy. You know what I'm saying? He is in the wrong weight class. Period. He is in the wrong damn weight class. And you guys are going to get enough of fighting in the wrong weight class. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you the side effects of that on, on another video. But anyways, that's my thoughts on it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Bruce Vane, I'm out.